Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Surveillance is showing heavy foot clan activity. We're taking hostages. Let's rock and roll. Go! Woo! This is our city. That's what I'm talking about. Like shadows in the night, yeah. completely unseen. Hello, Internet. Today is June 25th, 2014, and this is the Rambling Movie Minute, where we talk about everything movies from the week before, current, and still yet to come. I am Molango, uh, and um, I'm like here in Pittsburgh. Yeah, Pittsburgh. And also on the show, we have the great Sorg. How are you doing, Sorg? I'm here, uh, pulling up the wrong shot. There you are. I uh, watched a little bit of documentaries this week. I'm ready to talk movies, and especially what we had shown there at the top of the show. Nice, nice. And we also have the great and infamous Mad Mike. How you doing, Malango? I saw some movies this week, and man, do I have thoughts about Ninja Turtles. Nice. Yes, so let's, let's just let's go into it. Well, my first, my first question is: uh, Shredder a robot? You know, um, depends on which Ninja Turtles you follow. Uh, I guess you can say, right? Uh, 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 Mike can back me up on this. Um, I, I don't think he is because actually, um, they show. I don't know if you. If it's, I don't know. If this is a spoiler. If you look at the IMDb, you can see who actually plays Shredder, which I'm a little disappointed yeah. at because it's. I- Oh, uh, I think IMDb's mistaken. Really? I think IMDb's mistaken. Remember when? Ooh. Remember when? Um, we all thought that the guy playing Ra's al Ghul was some nobody. That's true. That's true. It was like an. Remember when? Thing. Remember? Remember when that chick definitely wasn't Talia Al Ghul? Yeah. And if you watch really, 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 really closely in the trailer we just showed you, William Fickner is talking to a bald, scarred man obscured in the shadows. Now, unless that's the gentleman from the Amazing Spider-Man movies, I'm thinking that's a Rokusaki. Okay, I'm with that. I'm with that. Rokusaki is a shredder for those that maybe uh, didn't grow up in the 80s. Like us. Yeah, it, for the, for those who want to rewatch the trailer and see what I'm talking about, it's uh, when they have William Fickner say, "I've upgraded your armor," mm-hmm. and that's why I think the shredder that we see that has like the Ginsu blades and everything like that that slices, dices, makes jelly and fries in three different slices. Yeah, I think that is a robot. Okay, so we got robot and shredder, I, and, and then but we do also have real shredder. I think there will be a real Shredder. There will be a little bit more traditional version of Shredder. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think they jumped what, what you guys? Go ahead. So what do you guys think of uh, overall of that of that trailer? I mean, so there's, there are two things. The first question I'm, I'm leading to is, are they giving us too much, too many nuggets here? The second question is, does this, does this hype, you guys up to go see this anymore it does hype me up i was actually sold on the trailer right before it that i saw originally um i think in front of how to train your dragon 2 uh there was enough of the elements in there that this is my ninja turtles this is it i mean i still i'm still a little iffy on this idea of they're so large for instance um but i found yeah. a lot of the humor is there and i don't know if it's trailer making or what but it feels very like it has that that michael bay ninja Tur- or i'm sorry transformers vibe to the trailer but you can't i can't really everybody has that everybody has that loud noise going black dun, dun. like it's the same there's a slow-mo boom you know when he hits the car in the one trailer you know it, 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 every yeah. trailer has that regardless if it has anything at all to do with the movie itself um but i think there's enough i saw enough hints of awesomeness there um some of the voices i think are a little weird just i don't know just because i'm so used to uh one voice or another uh you know growing up or or like i don't know we'll see we'll see 
but very excited about it. I'm more excited about this than I think going into Transformers. Like I don't like I don't feel like they butchered it to the point where they did Transformers with the look and feel of it. To a point. Now, Mike, I know you have thoughts. Um, I I think this is good because there are certain things I saw in the trailer that I really enjoyed, mm-hmm. like Raph pretending to do a Batman voice. Mm-hmm. That that just tickled me because I'm like that is absolutely a Raph thing to do, like pretend to be Christian Bale's Batman. I could absolutely see that, <laughs> but yeah. at the same time, it looked like their first interaction with April looks kind of rapey. And that might just be because they're so much bigger than her. Yeah. Like, they are, like, triple the size of Megan Fox, at least. And that, to me, doesn't scream turtle. Like, I, I don't I don't know. I've always... Like, my Ninja Turtles have always been small. Yeah. You know, I, I agree with that. I mean, I don't know. I'm going to just leave this up to... Uh, Michael Bay. We'll see his ad- adaptation of it. I do think that the trailer, though, the character voices definitely helped in the sense of, like, I feel more invested with the characters because I could kind of relate to oh, yeah, I feel like that's how Michael D'Angelo would talk. And I could see Donatello doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, In terms of giving stuff away, I, I don't know. I kind of I kind of like what I saw because then it made me think, yeah, I can see this as the, as the movies that I saw in the 90s. I think they have to give more stuff away only because more people are skeptical about this. Yes. Yeah. And I love, love, love that every trailer I've watched recently has made fun of the aliens idea. Yeah. <laughs> really? I don't know. Huh? I like that. Well, but, I, but that was the dude. biggest thing to the point where like Michael Bay was lashing back online in interviews and stuff. Um, yeah, but it just sounds like it's something that they threw in afterwards because they did change like the title of the movie. There were supposedly mm-hmm. some things that were rewritten, like. But they didn't. I don't. But they did. Somebody said, "Hey, hey, do you want to piss everybody off? Don't do this." And and, they, and 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 also, I want to point out, it's produced by Michael Bay. I don't believe it's directed by him. So so, there's a different level of of involvement there than. Oh, I don't know. It still looks like we found a shred former. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it's that it bad. It looks like we found a straight form of song. I'm surprised. No, no, no. I didn't realize this was coming up in August. Yep. So August we have like it's this. It's almost going up against Guardians. Almost. Like, That's it's gonna, crazy. Well, it's going to be all about Guardians and, trans, er, and Ninja Turtles. I Wow. Wow. By the yeah. way, my childhood uh, this summer between Transformers this week and then Turtles at the end of the, uh, the, the season. Holy crap. Um, yeah. <laughs> Dude, this whole week, this whole summer has been like. The, I was having a discussion. I actually wrote to the guys at um, Cord Cutters about this because they're having a discussion about their their movie draft. Um, and what I was what I mentioned to them is the way that this summer set up. It's every week back to back to back to back. Like these, none of these sh- these movies are really holding. Their ground besides something I like Frozen, obviously, mm-hmm. but How to Train Your Dragon uh, dropped a, a spot from last week, and I mean Twenty Two Jump Street, which technically had a, I guess what some would say a strong weekend because they're making they're making a lot of bank overseas. It was record breaking. I mean, it, yeah. it was for R rated movies. It was record breaking. So, but sp- speaking of that, yeah, let me let me go into the box office scores real quick. Yeah. Um, I, Think like a man. Uh, <laughs> think like a man took the number one spot. It's crazy. I'm just, disappointed. Just, just <laughs> America. It's like the World Cup game. There were <laughs> there was literally less than five million dollars between Think Like a Man and Twenty Two Jump Street. There were literally five minutes left in that World Cup game. We could have gotten a victory. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's all my fault. I and even I as far as that, points, like yeah. to say that, like, like how to train your dragon isn't hanging on. It's still number three with in five thousand or five million dollars of the top two of Think Like a Man Two and Twenty Two Jump Street. So yeah, it's not like they're hurting that much. I mean, like in terms of the biggest thing going for How to Train Your Dragon Two is the fact that it is the only kids movie mm-hmm. until 
I believe next week. I'm not sure when Echo comes out, but I think Echo comes think, out around Fourth of July. Yeah, around Fourth of July okay. weekend. So there, I mean, there's another. I would say there's another two weeks, or how the Trainer Dragon can still make like a strong. I got. I don't want to say like a strong comeback, but you know, it could still recoup some of that money that I guess they're probably projecting for it. But uh, I don't know. I mean, think like a man too. I mean, good props to those guys for sneaking that out, I guess. But yeah, I don't know. Something too, like I, I don't know. I don't know about you, man, Mike. But I definitely had this this roadblock. I really wanted to see Twenty Two Jump Street when it came out that weekend. But I chose How to Train Your Dragon 2 over that. And then this past weekend, I was like, well, do I really want to go see this comedy in theaters. I couldn't justify going to see it in theaters after, like, all of the kind of, like, the hype was gone. I'm at the point now where I'm like, I'll just wait for it to come out. On my uh, I would see it as soon as possible. Yeah? I would see it as soon as possible. It was... Way funnier than Neighbors, which I thought was great. Um, probably the funniest movie I've seen all year. Oh yeah! Oh, wow. Yeah, it was. It, oh man, it was just really, really, really good. It was really, and the end credits. Like I'm not spoiling anything about that for anyone who listens to this. And either you guys stay to through the credits. It's the most amazing credit sequence I've ever seen, and that includes any Marvel movie. <laughs> All right. I mean, I'll, I'll take that endorsement because, yeah. like you said, I have off two days coming up, so maybe I will just throw money away. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, uh, you, you are not throwing money away. It's absolutely worth the 10 to 12 bucks you pay to see a movie. Nice. All right. Well, hey, moving on. So, um, I would say uh, this next this next story. Uh, I am pulling the article from um, ComingSoon.net, but I'm hitting up on on an interesting note. So, our generation, we were used to ET, um, and I think this generation's ET might just be Earth to Echo. It has. I feel like it has the same blueprint as E.T. Mm -hmm. By me just watching the trailers, and they give away a lot. They're targeting a family audience, so they're trying, I think they're trying to give away as much information to say, hey, this is a cool sci-fi, kid-friendly, very funny type movie for, it has, you know, the gadgets, it has, like, the the token black kid who's like the cool <laughs> kid in the neighborhood. You know, it's like, I don't know. Even on bicycles holding echo, I think. Yeah. Uh, and like the, the article even states equal parts ET and the Goonies. Um, and then they also state Cloverfield. I'm not really getting that, but what do you guys think of this? I mean, is this, are we looking at our modern day ET here? And if so, I mean, it's hard to really judge if it's going to have like, like that grip that E.T. had for when it came out. You know, I, I think the big thing is you're, you're not going to see these uh, whimsical kids movies like this typically come to theater like we did before with Goonies, with E.T., you know, stuff like that. Uh, you know, there's not much room out there in the theater for, for that. Uh, I think when you find a movie like this is your ABC Family, Disney Channel kind of kind of stuff. And I think that's where those belong. Or not belong, but I think that's where they kind of find their place because their audience is there versus the theater. Uh, I think that's why you don't see too much like this. Um, like when I watch it, I feel like it should be a straight to DVD release. Um, but maybe because of that, because you don't see much of that, I mean, you know, just like I don't know if you guys saw this. When I went to see How I Train Your Dragon two, it was all like it was Echo. There was something called Dolphin Tail two. Uh, which again, like, felt like that's one of those things you see at the beginning of the DVD you rented, and it's like it's coming to DVD, and that's it, you know. And I'm like, really, yeah. this is this is a theater movie, you know? Uh, just like, you know, you guys can kind of tell, right, when you see like a uh, trailer, and you're like, there's a certain level of trailer making or production on this that you're like, that's straight to movie, you know, that that's straight to release or or limited release. This is not a budget thing. This is not a big blockbuster thing, you know. Um, this is something. This is something my mom's gonna watch on the Hallmark Channel, you know, um, and 
and I still even, you know, even though it's got some pretty cool special effects, I get that with Echo. But I got that from Narnia, too, a little bit, too. It, it kind of looked like a combination of E.T. and Super 8 to me. Yes, it feels like, mm. like that, that's, that's the vibe I was getting from it. I don't necessarily know if I'm going to see Echo. If it's in a double half of a drive-in feature, yes. I'll give it a look. I think that's but, the yeah. perfect place for it. But other than that... Other than that, it seems like... I mean, personally, when I was a kid, E.T. scared the hell out of me. That, yeah. that was just me. E.T. looked weird. He didn't talk. He just screamed. And he ate Reese's Pieces, which I hate. So nothing about E.T. appealed to me when I was a child. It completely this, got me to eat Reese's Pieces. Yeah. <laughs> to the point where that is exactly what my grandma snuck into the theater every time we went. Yeah. I mean, I would I would almost say that, like ET was I mean not it was it's in the realm of our generation, but I would say more like the Goonies stuff like that was more us Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that like spectrum. So like seeing this movie kind of makes me think like, well, it, I don't think it's going to captivate me as like the Goonies did. And Super Eight, I mean Super Eight has its problems, but. I felt like when I watched Super 8, I don't know if it's the J.J. Abram effect, but something about Super 8 just felt like, ah, I could I could do this. This is like, I'll give this a shot. Echo, I mean, I have a daughter now, and she's not at the age where she would want to go see these movies. So I'm dodging this bullet, and I'm not going to go see this. Is that not- something you consider? Like, when you see movies come out, like, like since you do go really, to a lot of kids' movies. Does that kind of, like, yeah. make that easier for you, you think, when, when she does become of age like that? Um, I don't know. I have this I have this weird impending fear that I will be having arguments with my daughter over what kids' movies will be seeing. She's going to love that, like, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 2 that you're, like, so ho-hum about, but that's the one she's going to play over and over on the yeah. Netflix account, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I'm going to be like, let's go see the latest Pixar, or, like, let's go see what DreamWorks is doing, and she'll be like... I want to see Planes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Planes 2 is coming out. Oh, yeah. can we do a side? I know this isn't on the rundown, but can, can we do an aside? Did you guys see the newest trailer, probably with uh, How to Train Your Dragon? Yes, now, I did. Now, Wait, the newest trailer for Planes? Yes. Now, Just Toby Keith, because that's kind of what I think the movie is. That's well. <laughs> I hate myself for saying this. But oh, it no. kind of got me interested in it because oh. it did have some of that humor. You know, th- th- it had some of that car's humor. At least it was showing it in this trailer. And I'm sure I saw all the good points in this trailer. It's the uh, fire rescue planes they're doing now. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. Not that I'm going to go see it. but Sork, no, Sork, yeah, I'm, yes. I'm going to quote. A famous, a famous uh, war admiral. No, no, I, I think Framerus is actually, is actually accurate. By the way, no, Ninja Turtles cut. Uh, and and uh, the the quote is, "It's a trap." Yes, it's exactly. Trap. What Mike, what Mike saying? Listen, to Mike, sword. Do not go see this it's movie. Trap. Oh, I'm not going to see the movie. I'm not going to go to a theater and see this movie. I haven't even seen the first one. I'm just saying, Famous someday on a lonely like Sunday when I'm flipping through the Netflix and happen to see it, I'll probably put, I'll probably put it on. Oh gosh! Like, just wow, that, that was a that trailer. Movie. That trailer was just placed for parents to say, "All right, there'll be a couple funny things." There. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, I will I, take I, little Johnny I, to take to see that. Like that that trailer. It's just planes. Subtitle, America, not <laughs> even yeah. America, M E R I K U H in all caps, like. It just seemed like, like you remember those movies that uh, Sylvester Stallone used to do in the mid '90s, where he would uh, be a firefighter or a cop and he would rescue people. Yeah, it's the yeah. same thing. Except they didn't have that budget. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it seems like to me. It just seems like, and they're releasing it around the Fourth of July. Like, ah, uh, it just bothers me so much. Yeah, I like I'm sorry, you're rescuing tiny cars from a burning forest? They can drive out of the forest. <laughs> you're putting too much logic into this. 
<laughs> no, but, but this is the world. This is the world where your car has a face. I think it's. I think logic stops there. But are like I haven't seen cars. I haven't seen planes. Are there people in this world? No, from what I can tell, there are no people. Okay. Yeah, yeah there's, I think there's, this is there's a function that like kind of breaks weird, down. Yeah, this is a weird alteration. Like if if we were in the world of cars, Pixar's cars, I think this is like their. I don't know. I think this is really parallel. kind of the this is Disney's version of the post Skynet world where our uh, our self driving cars have kind of taken over and now they just drive each other. Uh. <laughs> Isn't it though? Because like I'm, I like I, I had to wrap my head around this concept that there's a semi truck that that Lightning McQueen gets into to be driven. Yeah, you know, like I mean, that, this is the kind of like you gotta let loose a bit here. I mean, sorry, like you're only gonna know before. when you actually watch Cars, and and Cars is a decent movie. So that bothered me in Transformers, and that bothers me with this. Oh yeah, like how the Transformers would always uh, get on the space shuttle thing, but yet they all can fit inside of him somehow. But he's just as big yep. as them otherwise, or sometimes smaller. Oh yeah, I have a huge problem and with not that. To mention, Megatron Optimus that turns into a gun uh, that a human can hold. Come on, Optimus is trailer too. Like yeah, there would there would be cars. I'm like, can't they just drive themselves? Like are they at low on energy? And it miraculously <laughs> disappears and reappears as he transforms. How is that? It's not like Optimus is exactly fuel efficient. That's all I'm saying. That's true. <laughs> the well, I destroy the environment. Well, I By the way, I think that's our show title. Optimus is not fuel efficient. No, no. <laughs> so we all know Harrison Ford decided to do some crazy Star Wars stuff and hurt himself. Oh. Um, but with that comes the speculation of no. rewrites... A delayed release, possible replacement actors, oh, etc., no. etc. Are we? How upset are we about this? Quite frankly, like I don't know. I'm at the I'm at the point that if they're going to do it right, then you know, whatever. If it if it improves the story, like I don't know how much Harrison Ford being in the new movies really like. I don't know. I, I'm not like. Oh, if Harrison Ford's not in there, Star Wars will be ruined. You know, like, I don't know. But then again, do we wait for him to heal and then we get, like, a 2016 release? I I think the only main selling point of this Star Wars movie so far is the fact that you got Carrie Fisher, Harrison Ford, and Mark Hamill in it. I think you let Harrison Ford heal, you do it the right way, because uh, let's be honest, Disney as a whole is okay for tentpole movies. They're they're gonna be all right. <laughs> like I'm not too concerned about them. They should do, because this is a big franchise for them. They're trying to bring it back properly. They should wait till he heals and do it right. Mm -hmm. And even if Harrison Ford has to walk with a cane. Just write a throwaway line that, so it fits Han Solo. It yeah. makes sense that Solo would get injured in a war or something. Because just because the Emperor was destroyed doesn't mean the war ended. Mm -hmm. It's very... Uh, you could even say he got... He crashed the Falcon. And he hurt his leg. I just like write it into the movie. Like... You just gave me this horrible thought that the new Star Wars movie is going to be a metaphor for the war in Iraq. No. <laughs> oh, God. Does that mean the Emperor is Dick Cheney? Because <laughs> mm. <laughs> I've always thought that. I've always thought that. Yeah, I mean, I agree, and I, I don't know. Because I, I agree. I think, yes, you're right. If they're going to do it with a franchise like this, if they're going to do it right, then they should do it right. Um... I don't, uh, on the other hand, though, playing devil's advocate, there is a lot of story, and we have been given the basically the reins. J.J. Abrams has been given the reins to say, "All right, you know, take take the information you know and expand this universe for the next three episodes and beyond." So, I mean, not having him. I could I, I could play the argument of not having him in a prominent role, 
could make sense, but that's just playing devil's advocate. I think I would like to see him, and I, th I think you're right. They could definitely write him in as something, like, oh, mm -hmm. he's injured, or the Millennium Falcon, he crashed it while, you know, in his old age doing a three-point parallel three point. You say a three-point so. turn in, in the Millennium Falcon? <laughs> yeah. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> trying to beat his record in the Kessel Run, he cracked. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> so yes, hey, uh, a quick other, uh, a quick other note. Um, it looks like Pixar just released um, a short for, or it, it was released to a small previewing group of people, and by their accounts, they said they loved it. So I guess we should all be excited about that when it comes around. Yeah, what it's is called it? Inside Out. Okay. Um. There's not a lot of information about it. There's just literally the one concept art. Uh, but like the article reads from uh, comingsoon.net, uh, uh, the, the person that saw it loved it. And I mean, I don't know. I, I enjoy Pixar stuff. I think they have a really good core group. But I think this is just, I, <laughs> to be honest, I think this is the news and like Pixar trying to say like, hey, we know Daring Your Dragon was pretty good. <laughs> I'm, I'm actively excited about this movie, though. Because they got a whole bunch of comedians, and the comedians were supposed to be playing the emotions inside this little girl's head. Yeah. I'm actively excited about it. Because, first of all, it puts Louis Black in a Pixar movie, which I never thought I'd be able to say out loud. Wow. Yeah, I'm okay with that. And, and I want to point Amy, out... Amy, Amy Poehler's in it, Bill yeah. Hader's in it, yeah. Mindy Kaling's in it. All very, very, very funny people. I mean, you don't you don't think this is just them saying? Because I mean, we already know that Pixar can produce like quality stuff. I mean, with them slating two thousand or two thousand fourteen as a wash, basically. I think this is just news to keep them relevant. I mean, it's good news, right? Like you're you're agreeing that the people that they have that are playing these characters are freaking phenomenal. You'd love to see the voice actors in these roles. So I I guess all publicity is good publicity? All news is good news? So, Yeah, I think so. I, I, just kind of a reminder thing. I, maybe this was kind of a filler thing to say, hey, Pixar's doing something because they didn't do anything this summer. And it says it's going to hit uh, theaters as a short on June 19th, 2015. Is that the date of their next uh, major release? I imagine it's going to be attached to yeah. that, right? I'm I'm assuming that that's how they usually attach their shorts. Okay. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not. I mean, this is all technical news too. I'm not sure if the Canadian studio, because I believe the Canadian Pixar studio closed the ones that did the shorts. So I think it's all in house now, back in California. Okay. Not that that really means anything, because, like I said, Pixar is pretty good. Uh, but moving on. So, this weekend's throwdown is not really a throwdown. Transformers and this movie called Snowpiercer, which right now on Rotten Tomatoes is pulling in an 87% on Rotten Tomatoes. To me, though, this means nothing, because I remember seeing this trailer, I, like, almost a year ago. <laughs> so, it's going up against Transformers... Kind of feel like Transformers is just gonna. What is? Remind us again. What is this movie? Yeah. What? Okay, so this movie is basically, uh, I guess a post, uh, yeah, post, Apple something. Post apocalypse. Where yeah, where you have your economy classes on this train. The rich people are in the front, like first class, obviously, and then you have many, many cars of lower class. And they kind of just get to the point where they're like, uh, we're not going to stand for this anymore. <laughs> and they decide to fight back on a train. That sounds horrible. Yeah. So, sounds, and, and not is this better. a limited release thing? I have not seen a single trailer for it. Yeah, like I said, I saw trailers for this almost a year ago. And then to see it coming out this weekend... I don't know. Like that's that's the thing. With Chris Evans. Yeah. With the Captain America himself in this as part of this. That's interesting. Uh no, I think this is just thrown out there because nobody else wants to take on Transformers and uh 
and, and, and Marky Mark. So, uh, I think we just found a Transformer, Sork! No, he looks Transform like the Shredder! I think Transformers is going to easily take it, knocking down whoever, unless there's like a weird resurgence in How to Train Your Dragon 2, people figured out it was good, you know. Um, it's all about Transformers, that's what I'm going to see. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't know what I'm going to see this weekend. I know I'm going to see Transformers eventually. Mm -hmm. I do still want to see How to Train Your Dragon 2, which I haven't seen yet. I think it's going to be uh, kind of a toss-up to see which one I actually go see. Because Transformers isn't really pulling me in as much. Like I've like got, it's not something that I have to see the week of. Yeah. See, Transformers to me is like the restaurant that everybody says, "Oh, you have to go to that restaurant. It's, the food there is amazing." And then you go, and you're kind of like, "Uh, this isn't that great." And, and you leave with like like a stomach like bug. And, and, and like, I'm guessing oh. you guys didn't really grow up Transformers fans, right? I did hear yeah. that. <laughs> I was more, I mean, I definitely got hooked on when they did the, um, the re, the re, uh, vamp of the cartoon, I think on Cartoon Network. Okay. So I saw a couple of those, but I was more into like Beast Wars and stuff like okay. that. Okay. Oh, wow. Beast Wars. That's the yeah. hardly Transformers. Um, <laughs> that's, I don't know. I, I have issues with Beast Wars. I mean, I, I, I finally sat down and watched it like a little later. Uh, and, and, and it's like, okay, okay. I get it. I get what they're doing with these sports. Um, but yeah, it, it, I, I'm sorry. I saw like the original animated movie in a theater. I even went and saw the GoBots movie. I was so into this stuff back then. Um, Sorg, and, I own the GoBots movie. How do you it. own the GoBots movie? I owned it. I owned it. I don't have it anymore, but you can't I find that anywhere. So into GoBots. I was so into GoBots. I don't know why. The Rock Wars, Challenge of the GoBots. Well, no, it was easily it was easily because they were the Kmart Transformers, and we were not a very rich family. <laughs> so I have a giant, giant, giant collection of GoBots, and only a handful of Transformers that were found at a yard sale. So, yeah. Anyways, no, it's going to be I was, great. I was trying to find out if uh, Snowpiercer was a limited release or not. Mm -hmm. and to be honest, I cannot figure that out like it's which that, it's that weird well, limited huh i mean i don't know if it is limited it's that's a weird movie to make limited i think you're Snow right i think it kind of sounds like a movie that was made within an austin powers movie okay no like like you like in the gold member they were they were watching an austin powers movie like moon raver or something like that Snowpiercer sounds like yeah. a movie Austin Powers would watch about himself. I don't know. It just it does not sound good <laughs> on any level. Yeah, I don't know if that if somebody decides to go see that and hit the rest, please let us know what we should do with that. Snowpiercer. Awesome. Like I said, critics. When I think I think critics on Rotten Tomato sometimes have a I mean I guess, I guess I could also be blamed of this but they have like this elitist mentality where everything has to be oh you know very amazing for them to give it a good review and the fact that they're giving it like an 80 something percent I don't know kind of scares me but I mean that's the that's the weekend uh, so yeah I'm saying Transformers will probably just sweep off the floor with this hey what you guys watch this weekend mm hmm I was in a very Besides. documentary mode myself, uh, oh, and yeah. I found the trailers for everything. Uh, no, I just, uh, it's what I ended up with. I did put on Wayne's World just just because it was on Netflix, and it's been a while since I put that on uh, in the background. While and I was that's not all you watch, Sorg. You watch Escape from Tomorrow. Oh, I keep forgetting about it because I'm blocking out my mind, but we'll get that in a moment. So I watched a couple <laughs> interesting ones. Uh, this one... Uh, I can't say I recommend it. It's interesting enough just to see what's going on. This Life 2.0, it's basically about um, uh, people who play Second Life. So if you're kind of curious about that, uh, this is a movie for you. Um, also, I got to see, and again, I'm kind of doing this rat hole in reverse order that I fell into. Uh, this one called The Institute, an interesting art, uh, live art something or other, social engineering 
thing that happened in San Francisco. Um, I feel like I need to go rewatch it when I'm not like doing work so I can kind of understand what happened. But it was one of those, like they talked about it was a sense of play, which is something we talk about in one of the clients I work with. Um, but you would like, people would get these messages. Like at one point they talked about this guy got, to, he got a message. He had to go to a phone booth, got a call. And there's a, somebody that says in order for something, something to happen. So the bad guys don't get something you have to dance. So this guy is dancing in the middle of the street and then a Sasquatch walks up and somebody else and music starts playing from somewhere and they're all dancing together. And at the end they hand him the specifications. The Sasquatch hands him the specifications. <laughs> like this is the kind of weird ass stuff that was going on. They even showing they're showing a little bit there, like going into the library and finding something, you know. And 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 there's this like mythical uh, evil. Uh, at one point, they they had apparently they were talking about how this group. Um, they're like everybody thinks they're part of something that's like a sci-fi adventure, and then we got them all to go to a hotel, and it was just a seminar. And. What and that turned into I don't, know, the, they had I don't dis- know what rabbit hole you fell down this weekend, but oh my gosh! Yeah, <laughs> oh, it was trippy as all hell. The other one, this is more of a uh, on the other others, you know, the more the awesome cast probably a line of things. I watched one called Terms and Conditions May Apply. Man, that sounds boring, doesn't it? Um, oh gosh, <laughs> I saw that. Did you watch it? I saw that. Yes, and it made me. I told my wife I want to cancel everything. I want to get rid of Facebook, Twitter. I want to get rid of it all. If you want to know what all this privacy stuff is about, this movie was made pre-Edward Snowden and the NSA uh, leaks that you know kind of exposed what's going on. It kind of told you, like, this is the kind of power stuff like Google and Facebook have and all these other companies. And, and you even see it is making fun of the... Uh, the uh, human centipede episode of South Park a little bit, but it's a really good, it breaks everything down to a understandable thing. Cause this is stuff I've been hearing about. Cause I listen to a lot of tech podcasts. I've been hearing about all this stuff for years. And this is a nice package to say, Oh, that's what that means. Uh, a, a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, and they do touch on Moby's in this for some reason. They interview him. Um, uh, and at the end, they do have they. It, this is obviously produced before the Snowden thing, but released just in time for them to get like one of those first interviews with Snowden and kind of said they, hey, see why we were worried? Turns out we were right. So it was really, really good timing for as far as the people that put this thing together. Um, even the, I won't get too much into that. Also, I watched Escape from Tomorrow. Holy crap, Mike! I have kind of been having nightmares, and anytime <laughs> I see like 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 young girls that look like the two that he was stalking in the film. I go the other way. Cause it's kind of scaring the crap out of me. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's um, I am Lango. I do recommend it's on Netflix. Um, oh no, I'm not watching that. You, I stay away from that stuff. It's, it's not like scary, spooky. Don't no, watch, don't it's, watch it at it's night. really not scary at all. It's just kind of, uh, yeah, no, no. Disturbing, creepy stuff like that. I yeah, stay away from. It. But still, it's. I think because I you're, you're going to find yourself very, more like trying to figure out how they did the shot. Because there's points in this a, when it looks so amateurish, it's hilarious. Okay, I'm a very it goes from active imagination. Like, we're definitely. Oh yeah. Oh oh oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is with you pretty bad. Um, this, this, I still can't that, get the, that movie I, would keep me awake for like months. <laughs> I, I found myself I probably watched this when did I watch this? Like like Wednesday night, Friday night maybe? I found myself like yesterday, like still wrapping my head around the ending to this yeah. thing. And and <laughs> and Mike that like like last scene is like burnt into my brain now. Uh-huh. Oh gosh. Uh-huh. Oh, it is so rough. It so so many like, problems. I like, see it's you weird. Watch it at night. Nope. It's kind of like like if you can handle the haunted mansion ride, it's about on the same level as creepy. Like it's real. It's really not that bad. It's just I think it's more disturbing because it's Disney. <laughs> oh no! Somebody. Uh... Is that? It looks like Wheels found the GoBots movie in the chat room. Can you email yes! that to me? I will watch that later. I know what I'm watching later. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Wait, I don't know why. I'm like, man, oh, I really need to go watch, rent. I'll watch the man Shira movie. Oh, my night is set. There you go. There you go. I think it's on one of the DVDs I have. I think it's on, uh, I got like the best of Shira compilation. I think that's one of the discs. Is that movie. Hodor. 
I know it's Hordak, but what? It oh, Hordak, funny. Hordak, man. Anyways, what you... I know it's Hordak. It sounds funnier if you if Mike, you imagine that. Hodor, Mike, what though. did you watch? Please take me out for uh, this before I start <laughs> thinking about that movie again. I, well, I I talked a little bit about Twenty Two Jump Street already. Mm. I saw that. Um, very very funny. Uh, they have so much meta talk in it about the first movie and the second movie. It's amazing. Like, the second movie even starts with previously on 21 Jump Street. Like, it's great. <laughs> it's absolutely fantastic. Um, I bought the Lego movie, and I watched it with commentary, and it's hilarious still. Um, they apologize for the song Everything is Awesome, <laughs> for, the, for, for the earworm they created in the collective psyche of the planet. And um, I also saw Jay and Silent Bob's Super Groovy cartoon movie. Hmm. Now, for those of you who don't know what this is, um, Kevin Smith did a cartoon feature uh, a little while back. It was released, I think, um, uh, kind of like on a tour that he did. Mm -hmm. And I had a chance to go see it in, in uh, the city, but I decided against it just because I think I was busy that night or had something to do. Um it was it, it's a it's a blunt man and chronic cartoon movie. So it's it's got a lot of superhero aspects into it. Um if you watch a lot of Fat Man on Batman, you'll hear a lot of the same jokes. Mm -hmm. Um which is unfortunate. But it, it I saw it for five bucks. I got it on the um on the on man service at my parents' cable. It wasn't horrible. It wasn't horrible. I don't know if I'd watch it again. Uh, the voice acting was fun because it was a lot of like Kevin Smith regulars, and he had Eliza Dushku as the main villain, whose name is Lipstick Lesbian. Um, and also they have uh, they have the villain from Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, whose name is Cockknocker. And in Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, Mark Hamill personified Cockknocker. But um, in this version, it is Tara Strong, a very famous voice actress. And she is doing the voice of Bubbles from Powerpuff Girls. I know. As Cockknocker? So, yes, as Cockknocker. That's messed up. Um, so honestly, that's worth five bucks alone. Just, just hearing... Bubbles from Powerpuff Girls say Cockknocker repeatedly. It's very funny. Like I love. I almost want to see more of the villains than I want to see of Jay and Silent Bob. I want to point out this is um this is actually a production. This was produced by Jay. Yeah, yeah. It kind of the the art style isn't as good. No, well, the art the style it, it's from the guy because they you were taking sections of their show of their um, of uh, Smodcast and illustrating them because they would go off on these tangents and these stories and uh, of things that happened didn't happen that they make up and stuff and so like this Flash animator I think from Canada uh, just started doing it and they Jeez. started hiring him and they hired him to do the whole movie. So it's really cool. I mean, this is one of those where, where you know, Kevin Smith obviously has been uh, over the last few years very anti Hollywood in all of his productions. Doing you know, from the most of his work is podcasting, and he said he was done with movies. But now a story that they talked about on the podcast turned into the idea, and then a screenplay, and then they're working on the movie, and I think they're done with the movie, or they're in the process of, like, I'm only down to Bat Fat Man on Batman, I'm not listening to the rest right now, they get the full story, um, but, um, it's, you know, no, it's not the greatest animated movie, I bet, just like you're not gonna watch the ICP movies, this is for these fans that are for, like, that are buying the tickets to Jane Silent Bob, um, it, and I think I saw an odd over there, right? Um, like this, this is a very exclusive audience. They didn't, I think, is did I see in the trailer? I think they said they, they spent $69,000 to make this thing. Yeah. Oh, it, it seems like it. Yeah. So, I mean, it's one of those, like everything's gravy from this point. They made that money yeah, back I mean, and then some on the tour. You know, I saw it for five bucks. Yeah. Worth it for five bucks. Yeah, Absolutely. Exactly. They're not looking to get another, I don't know, uh, clerk's blockbuster or something, you know, uh, they're, they're. They're on a level. They know their level. They know their audience. They're speaking directly to them. And I think it's really cool that they're doing that. 
So, awesome. Malango, did you watch no, anything? Malango? Um, I did watch, I watched two really bad movies, <laughs> which is one of those things where you, you like, you click play and you're kind of like, I know this is going to be bad, but I'm going to try it anyway. And I should have just stuck with my gut. About last night, I saw that. Malango, you're part of the problem. I am part of the problem. Um, the whole time I'm sitting there like, please let this like wrap together somehow in, in a great story plot that somehow makes, you know, sense because they're trying to be funny and they're trying to be like, you know, catchy and, and romantic and something. And it just, eh, oh my gosh, why? And the other woman, because Cameron Diaz is still attractive and <laughs> the other, the other co-star the other host, uh, or co-star, I can't remember her name, but I, from um, uh, This Is 40, uh, whatever. She is also very funny. But the problem with that movie was she was the only comic relief. Oh. And she could not carry it. Like, so mm -hmm. that was just, it was just bad. It was bad. <laughs> so, so, yes. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, I finished a lot of Netflix stuff. So, finished Orange is the New Black. Awesome season. Definitely go check that out. Um, and I finished Game of Thrones, but I think that was last week. I think, yeah, because we – did we miss last week? Anyway, yeah. Game of Thrones. Um, and I've been watching a lot of soccer. World Cup. Of course. Football. Of course. So. Well, like, you know, I, I tried to warn you about the other woman. Yeah, I mean... I tried to warn you. like, And it's not the fault of any of those actresses. They just were not given good things to work with. But Kate Upton is very pretty. Yeah, and... Uh, like, even, even she, they gave her some lines that were like, oh, you're... Okay, that's she cute. Knew, She's the new Cameron Diaz. Cameron Diaz is the new Leslie Mann, and Leslie Mann acted like Kate Upton. Like that. <laughs> it's just the role reversals. That's all it was. Uh, it was, yeah. That was sad. So, yes, don't go see those movies. Not that anybody that watches a show if, would. If you see uh, Kevin Hart attached to it, oh, run, yeah. run and watch the Lego movie again. Definitely. All right. So uh, with that, we are going to wrap this thing up. Uh, where can we find you guys? Sorg. Hey, I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitters, uh, at uh, SorgatronMedia.com for this and other shows. we got a lot of stuff going on. Not movie-related, but we got a lot of variety this week with some of our uh, digital download releases and some extra stuff we're doing for the awesome cast here local in Pittsburgh. So if you're interested in technology and wrestling, uh, that's the place to be. And other stuff, too. Just did a great stuff with the uh, uh, Journal of Life Sale Medicine uh, yesterday as well. So go check all that out. And video games, too. So. Mm -hmm. Nice. Bad mic. Uh, I am at Mad Mike four eight eight three on the Twitters. Uh, feel free to tell me who is your favorite Batman, and if your answer isn't Kevin Conroy, I'll tell you why you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> nice, and you can find me at on Twitter at Rambling Mango, where you can always just you know check out what I'm doing. I have a comic strip that reviews uh, weekly uh, movies that have come out on that past weekend at uh, That Rambling Review. Uh, check that out. Um, and also check us, definitely join our Facebook group. We have a lot of discussions on there. The Rambling Movie Minute. Um, we, you know, surveys and a lot of fun movie talk and stuff. So, yes, with that, uh, everybody have a great weekend. Go watch some awesome movies. And uh, we'll ramble.